Hi there. Um, welcome here. So this uh, video is going to show you how to quickly graph uh, transformations of sine and cosine using mapping notation. This is assuming that you already know what sine and cosine look like. That uh, a cosine curve kind of looks like that, starting at 1 right here. And then if you do things to it, like putting numbers in the front, putting numbers here in the brackets, or putting a number on the end, that it does things to this curve. And uh, so this video assumes that you've already uh, seen that kind of thing. This video also assumes that you've um, seen, I guess, uh, what, what would we call it? Angles in standard position where we have zero degrees, 90 degrees, um, 180, 270. And if you, if you rotate all the way back around again, as you know, we would be at 360 degrees. Okay, so this video assumes you've watched perhaps my other videos on that as well. Angles in standard position. So I hope you remember some of that stuff. One more thing this video assumes that you know. It's good to know what this video is assuming, otherwise things can get really confusing. Um, are uh, the five key points that are written right here. This video assumes that you recall the five key points. So um, I'll just repeat them right now. Those five key points are at uh, 0, 90, 180, 270, and back to 360 again. And those five key points are actually right here. Okay? They're written down right here. Okay. So with having said all of that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase this. There we go. Pick a blue pen. There we go. And, uh, yeah, we're doing this in pen, but uh, remember, my pen can be erased. Whereas, if you like to live dangerously, you can also do math in pen if you prefer. Now, the reason why uh, I like to do something called mapping notation, which you may have never heard of, is because when I was in school, I would get, uh, I would get a situation like this, an equation like this, and my teacher would make me do each thing separately. For example, uh, I'd have to, you know, uh, make the amplitude, which is one of the properties of a sinusoidal curve, again, from a previous video, I would have to deal with the amplitude, and then I'd have to draw how that changed the graph. So I'd have a, the basic sine curve, and then I would have the amplitude. Oh, it's two, so it's actually going twice as high and twice as low as a normal sine curve. Then I would, in another color, I would have to do... Uh, shift that over 15, remember to the right, so it would be over at 15, and it would, you know, it would be kind of like that. And then I would have to, I'll take another color, like a pink, I'd have to do the, the plus 2 here, which means the whole thing would get shifted up to 2. Instead of cutting through at 0, it would cut through at 2. Okay? And then, anyway, what I'm saying is, is mapping notation eliminates this confusion. And all it does, it gets us to think about what's happening to our sine curve. And we can do it all at once using this thing called mapping notation. So let's start right now. Um, let's start by thinking about what is happening to any point, x, y. What's happening to any point when this is being done to it? Okay, now maybe that will be more simple by just doing it, okay? Let's think about x right now. What is happening to the values of x when you look up here at this equation? Okay, the first thing that I notice is that right over here, um, you, we, every point for x is going to not be subtracted by 15. Remember, the brackets always lie to you in these equations. In fact, every point is going to move to the right 15. Okay, so it's actually going to move to the right 15. So every x value that we get is going to move to the right 15. I almost forgot the, the 15 there. Okay, now these other two numbers, this 2 here and this 2 over here, don't actually affect the x values. So I'm going to put a comma there. Now we're going to think about the y values. Okay, what's going to happen to the y values? Well, first of all, the amplitude is 2. That means it's going to go 2 higher and 2 lower than it normally would have gone. So every value of y is going to be multiplied by 2. 
What about this 2 on the end? Remember, the number on the end does not lie to you like the 15 did here. The 15 looked like it was moving to the left 15, and then we said, actually, no. In, in real life, it's actually going to the right 15, if we were to graph this. The 2 here does not lie to us. It's actually telling us the truth. Every y value is going to move up 2. Okay, so you keep that plus 2 on there. Over here is our map. You could call this our map. Well, it's actually called mapping notation. It is telling us exactly what's going to happen to each one of these points right here. Okay? Now, where do we get these points from? Once again, the first numbers you see here, 0, 90, 180, 270, and 360, these are the five key points. Okay? These are the five key points for sine. Okay? Actually, these five key points, what you can do is you could take your calculator in degree mode and type in uh, sine 0, and you will get 0 as an answer. You could type in sine 90, and 1 will be the answer that the calculator will give you. You could go sine 180, and you would get 0. Sine 270, you will get negative 1. Sine 360, you get 0. Here are the inputs, which are just the numbers that I talked about earlier around this Cartesian plane. Remember, 0, 90, 180, 270. Those are the numbers that go here. The numbers that go here, you can get from your calculator, or you can just kind of remember from uh, your experience graphing this stuff. Okay? Going back to the graphs and remembering how sine goes. In fact, I'll just show you. So it goes 0, 0. The basic sine curve, there's 0, 0. 90 is right here, 180 is right here, 270 is right here, and that's negative 1. Look at there, it's negative 1. So this is something you can memorize. But anyway, let's get back to mapping notation. All you do is you take 0, the x value right here, and you put it where you see the x value right here. What's 0 plus 15? Thank you, that is 15. Now you take the 0 here for the y value and you plug it in where you see y right here. So 2 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 2 is 2. And you keep doing this. Put a 90 where the x is. What's 90 plus 15? 90 plus 15, you should say, and I hope I don't get these wrong because it's my mental math that's terrible, but I'm, t I'm saying 105 and I'm sticking with it. Now, 1, we're not going to put in the x value because this is the y value. These are all the y values. So I'm going to put a 1 where the y is. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 2 is 4. All right. The next one, 180, I'm going to put where the x is. Plus 15, 195. Okay. The next value is 0. Again, that's the same thing we got at the beginning. 2 times 0 is 0 plus 2, and we're almost done, 270 plus 15, thank you, 285, and the y value this time is negative 1, so negative, or 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, plus 2 is 0, and the last, last but not least, we have 360 plus 15, 375, this is why I wrote in blue, because then when I hit the black area there, you can still see what I'm writing. Pretty nifty, eh? Okay, 2 times 0 is 0, plus 2 is just 2. Here we have all the values. So if we had a piece of grid paper, we can graph all of this. Now the cool thing is, is on the next page, I already have a piece of grid paper ready for us. Hopefully all of these numbers I have on the next page correctly as well. So kind of have a look at this. And... Oh boy, I see a mistake already. Do you see it? It's not too bad, but it's a good thing I was thinking about it because this video would have gone on and on and people will email me or tell me through the comments, you've made a mistake and I have to hear about that endlessly. Here I'm catching it ahead of time. 360 plus 15 is not 370. <laughs> it's 375. 
And on the other page, I actually had done it correctly. What about the Y values? Hmm. Whoops. Are they the same or not? 24202. 24202. Okay, I think we're good to go now. We're ready for liftoff. Here we go. I've still got the blue pen. Okay. Zero, zero. Now we could, your teacher may ask you to, to do the original graph of a uh, sign. So zero, zero, 90 and 1, 180 and 0. And because we don't have room on this paper for the, the original graph of sign, I'm just kind of 270 is at negative 1, so it's way down there, and 360 and 0. So we can kind of show the original. It's just going to peak up kind of like a, a whale emerging from the ocean. Oops, that was terrible. I, I'm sure I can... Can I get this line? Oh my goodness, terrible. Anyway, there's the original graph of sine. Y equals sine X. Just to be clear, I'm going to use my other maybe another pen, like a red one, and let's do the new ones. These are called the new points, okay? Sometimes they are called image points. Your teacher may call them image points. And sometimes these points, original points, are called, instead of key points, sometimes they're called object points. It just depends on who's your teacher and what kind of language they're using to confuse you. Okay. Anyway, let's graph these. Let's graph this new transformed sine curve. New and improved. Okay, the first one's 15 and 2. So go 15 across and 2. There it is. Next is 105 and 4. 105 should be right about here. 90, 100. Yes, this is 105. Uh, and it's supposed to be at 4. Oh, it's a good thing. This and the next one is 195 and 2. 195 and 2. And the next one's 285 and 0. And the next one is 375, not 370. 375. Oh boy, I'm off the page. And 2. Good thing I had a red pen. Okay. So now I'm going to try and, this is not easy doing it on the computer, it's, it's a little bit tough, so forgive me if I really mess up here, but it looks okay. Put an arrow on the end because we know these continue on, and uh, it's nice to label it actually. Your teacher will really like that if you label it. Um, y equals 2 sine, it's kind of long to write down here, but 2 sine. Then there was a bracket, x minus 15, and we remember it went up to, or I remember that, hopefully you do too. So there is our new equation graphed nicely, okay? You could use a program like Desmos to see the ultimate graph, but uh, if your teacher wants you to do this using pen and paper or pencil and paper, which is preferred, then yeah, do it this way. Do it, this mapping notation way is actually very quick. In the beginning, it's a little confusing, but after you've done it a few times, it's really not so bad. So let's do one more, and um, let's see, what color should I write with this time? I'll use yellow. Here's the key points. We're looking at this equation right here, and we're supposed to graph that between 0 and 360 degrees. So remember the key points. Now be careful with cosine. The key points will be slightly different than these key points for sine, okay? However, the numbers at the beginning are the same. The x values we get to pick. So remember, it was 0, 90, 180, 270, and then we end up at 360 again. You put a comma for each one. Okay. And then what we do is we're going to write the, the next point. So with cosine, it's a, it starts at 1. You can verify this on your calculator. Just type in cosine 0 or cos 0. Hit equals. It should give you 1. Okay? Then you should get 0 there. And you just continue this procedure. Cos 180 should be at negative 1. Then we're back up at 0 again. And then we're up at 1 again. Okay? So that's how cosine works.
in this in this question uh, we could I could graph it but I think I'm gonna I'm gonna just keep going here okay so there's the key points now mapping notation what we're supposed to do is think how would this happen what would happen to any point for x and y based on this equation so I'm looking up here and I'm gonna write down what happens to the x values here well in this case the x values there's nothing in front of x here to affect the x values by multiplying, but, but we do have a plus 30 here. Remember, plus 30 means in reality this sinusoidal curve, or this cosine curve, is going to go left 30, not right 30 like you might think. The brackets lie to us. So it's x minus 30 is what really happens to the thing. This is our true map of what's going on. What about the y values? Well, the y values, I see a negative 3 in front of this equation. So every value of y will be multiplied by th negative 3. And on the very end here, the whole curve is going to go down 2. Okay, it's all going to shift down 2, a vertical shift that is down 2. Okay? So remember, we're going to put a 0 where the x is. I've already explained that in the other Part of this video so just for speed's sake I'm gonna start doing it 0 minus 30 is negative 30 I'm just gonna do all the x values first 90 minus 30 is 60 there's commas beside each one 180 minus 30 is 150 270 minus 30 is 240 and lastly 360 minus 30 is 330 okay now let's do the y values. We're going to stick a 1 where you see the y. We're going to substitute that in. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. Okay? This times 0 is just 0, so negative 2. Feel free to push pause if you don't know how I'm getting some of these numbers. And try to see if you can work it out. Negative 1 times negative 3 is positive 3. Minus 2 is 1. 0 again. So it's going to be the same answer as up here. And 1, which is the same answer as here, negative 5. Thank goodness our graph paper up here is going to agree with what we've done here. So we could graph the original graph of cosine, but for speed's sake, I'm just going to show you the transformed graph of cosine using our new points, sometimes called the image points. So negative 30 and negative 5, that is off our paper. Okay, 60 and negative 2. Put a dot there. I um, wonder if I made a mistake here. I'm just starting to wonder now. No, that's correct. All right. Anyway, uh, 60 and negative 2. We've got 150 and 1. Right there. We have 240 and negative 2. Right there. We have... 330 and negative 5. Hmm. Negative 30 and negative 5 would have been out here. So it would have kind of been coming up again. Kind of like this. Whoa. Easy now. Boy. Please hit the dots. Thank you. There is our cosine curve. Now, you should label it just because it's so much better when you label something like this. Otherwise, it's just some random curve hanging out on the curb. x plus 30. We're almost done here. Isn't it satisfying to write this on at the end when you know you've done this stuff correctly? I mean, if, the, if one of these dots happened to be like somewhere weird, we know something would have been wrong, but we knew all of these were right because they all kind of follow the pattern that we see here with this curve, okay? Now, we're going to do a video, the, the next video actually, or coming soon anyway, where we will use this for the period, which means there will be a number in front of x that we will also need to include with this, this part here um, in our mapping notation. But that, is, that, does, that, that aspect of it deserves its own video because it's a little more complicated. So... You know most, you, you know like 90% of how to do this using mapping notation. It's great. Okay, I hope you think so. Have a great day.